That was the music. Thank you very much to whoever does our music. This is the Triple Threat Podcast. I am Matt Vaughn. I am in Halifax, Nova Scotia at this moment. Uh, also in Halifax, Nova Scotia, my older brother, but not oldest brother, Alex Vaughn. What's up? Not much? Go. And uh, go, go, go. the eldest... The eldest of the Vaughn. The elder group. of the Vaughn yeah. brothers. I was going to say clan, but I avoid using the word clan at every turn. That's mm. a great idea. Uh, Don't use cultural the word reasons. Clan at every ever. turn. There you go. Uh, yeah, the the second or third voice you heard there, rather. Will Vaughn in Vancouver. The, hey, uh, well. the eldest. I like to refer to myself eldest. as the eld best. Because eld best. I am. You've you, you got some eld corrections this, for this time. I, we're starting to get a little bit more on each other for what we're saying. So this is good. Okay, so guys, help me out. Who's the guy at the end of PTI does the corrections, you know, the stuff they messed up on? Uh, oh, my God. The guy who hosts... Um, Kornheiser? Or, oh, uh, no, 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 no. That's the other guy. Oh, Those that guy. I'm Tony Reale. Right. Tony Reale. Reale. Reale, yeah. So, you know, on, he's a, he's on, on an expensive... Lately. And uh, he's probably working on his. Uh, I don't know what he looks like recently. I haven't seen PTI in a while, but that that that's what you get in an expensive television show. You get someone correcting you right at the end of your little half hour of of information. Uh, we do not have such luxuries. We have to listen back to our shows. Uh, last week uh, was a, a lot of googling and sitting around. This week we're gonna do our best to avoid that. So I remember we were talking about our old Hewlett Packard computer. This is a, a minor flub, but I said we had a science DVD. We did not because we didn't have a DVD <laughs> drive. It was a science CD-ROM. And we were also speaking about where the New Orleans Saints played during uh, the 2005 season when uh, Katrina hit the city. And uh, we have uh, – I have a list here. That, uh, I don't know they played their first home game on – it was September 18th, I believe, uh, against the Giants in New York City. And then the other games, they split between the um, – Tiger Stadium, which is where the LSU Tigers play in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and they played in San Antonio at the Alamo Dome, uh, where uh, where they actually had their offices and practice. So there you go. That's that's where the Saints played uh, during that season. If you were, I don't know why I thought Oklahoma, but that was clearly way off. No, because that's where the Hornets went, wasn't it? New Orleans Hornets went to Oklahoma City. Oh, oh maybe. Be, maybe that'd be good reasoning. I'm pretty sure that's I'm what not going to Google it because no, we said we yeah. Were. We'll correct it next week. <laughs> I think the fans want more Googling. That's what I heard. They want more, more Googling. Googling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Google podcast. We don't Gosh. like it when you know what you're talking about. Just keep keep on uh, not knowing. Well, you know that really like snide, let me Google that for you link that Matt, you sent to me uh, one time. And they tried to respond with something, but I couldn't figure it out. But <laughs> this show, it'll be let us Google it for you instead of let me Google right. that for you. We'll, 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 do, uh, we'll let our fingers do the walking. I want to just, – just before we go any further, I just want to uh... – I, I want to sort of shame without naming. I will name. I will shame, but no, not name. There's a genre of podcast which is put out by a certain kind of network where uh, they have different. They have the same hosts, and the hosts like research a topic and then do like a half hour to an hour long podcast on it on a weekly basis. Mm. And uh, I used to listen to them, and then I stopped because I realized it was just like these people didn't have any expertise beyond what I could have come up with if I actually read about like it. Like what? What? Yeah, they just like go to Wikipedia dot org and yeah, like, look this up is the what stuff. I found online, and this you is what I read. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Want to learn, learn about the Civil War? Why. I'll read this Wikipedia article to you. There, aren't I yeah. so smart? I, I I just hope nobody. Hope well, nobody they're not. Cla- are they claiming it as their own? Knowledge. They have like a, 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 a website network where they can kind of be like, "Oh, there's this article on there," but it was still just people well, researching. It's like hearing a class. I want to like hear a expertise. class presentation. Like we're all we all graduated school. I don't want to hear a class presentation on on silt. I don't want to hear that. Right. I'd rather. I, I think it's an interesting age in which we live, though. It is an age where uh, information is always coming at us. Blah blah blah. You know, the information age. But uh, I, I find uh, a lot of the podcasts I listen to. And they're they're related to like entertainment and mostly like pro wrestling and stuff, but they're very very uh, informative. I learn uh, a lot, I guess, about stuff that doesn't really matter, but I find it fun and interesting. Um, but I'd rather hear stories about guys who experience something rather than, hey, look, I read this uh, Wikipedia article about you know this, and this is my opinion of it, or this is you know these are the facts, which I guess we do in our our, our trivia's. But you know, we we the also are like this is what happened to me. Mm-hmm. That's why it's an interesting story. You did have a, than, look what I researched on the internet ten minutes ago. Yeah, well, personal experiences you can't research. About, though, Matt. 
and I know you don't want to say. But you can you can call the, him. Well, no, it's I'm pretty sure if you want, you can call him out, and I'm I'm fairly certain we won't face repercussions as long as you don't put them yeah, in the descriptor. Yeah, that's the issue. I, I feel like there will be almost nothing to uh, <laughs> uh, get back. We love our fans. Uh, that's the issue. The love, issue is they we, won't uh, do anything about it. We love our fans, but I, I think that no, I don't know. I, just, a, I didn't. I didn't want to initially just be like. Days. I don't want to be shaming initially. Uh, okay, so that's fine. Now, I yes. mean, you don't. You don't. There's a whole. No, no, no. I have it. I have it here. There's oh, there's okay. like a series of podcasts done by HowStuffWorks.com, dot com, and yeah. they're pretty well lauded, especially if you follow Podmass, the AV Club. They often talk about them, and uh, I just realize it's not worth listening to because it's just. Yeah, it's regurgitation and uh, with very little added to it. And sometimes if they do one on a topic you're familiar with, they'll just spout things that aren't true for a little while. And that's pretty frustrating. So, okay. Yeah, it's when that happens that you realize, oh, what about all the ones I took at face value? Maybe they really don't know what they're talking about at all. Now that I so can So many understand. party anecdotes. That I can I've ruined. I, yeah, so it's frustrating. Anyway, so uh, yeah, we might as well start the podcast by uh, starting a podcast war with How Stuff Works. Yeah, I uh, say if you don't HSW. have, uh, I think it was Paul Newman said, if you don't have enemies, you don't have character. So that's uh, how we'll do it. We'll uh, we'll do with a hey it is, as uh, Mr. West would say. Alex, you wanted us to speak on uh, the upcoming football season. It's getting closer. Yeah, nice, nice segue. Uh, it's get, yeah, th- th- there was no, no well. segue there. It should have been like speaking of Kanye West from Chicago. How the Bears <laughs> looking there with uh, Mark Tressman as head coach? Still, right? Before this started, was, you're like, you're like, I have a good segue into football. Speaking of HowStuffWorks.com, Alex, uh, football yeah, season. Well, it's because it's because I was gonna work? I was gonna parlay from the Saints to uh, to to the football season, but Matt to stepped all over that. But yeah. that's okay. It's a live podcast. Sorry, man. I got I had to get out. I had to get the you had, had to get it out there. Otherwise, you would have forgotten. See, you didn't take notes like I did. I have notes, so I know uh, I can't read them, but I, I know what I want to say. I think. Uh, I did at least at one point, but uh, the uh, I realized that I need to catch up on where players are playing. Now, Eric Decker, I saw a he's in a like a, a <laughs> was it some kind of jean company billboard or something like on bus stops. So I see him and I automatically think Broncos. We get traded to the Jets, right? Eric Decker. No, he plays no? for the Jets. He didn't get traded to the Jets. He signed as a free signed agent. There. Okay, well, he, I guess my – okay, so he, he no longer plays for the Broncos. He now plays for the Jets is kind yes. of what I was meaning by, by saying that. I, I know my verbiage wasn't quite, quite correct. The business of sports no, is something that, that puzzles me. Like I, I follow Cap Geek on Twitter, but I don't understand anything what they're saying. I, re- I enjoy it. Actually, it's I, enjo- I, just, I just, I'm very Decker stupid. And that whole situation – not that you're an expert in Broncos to Jets transactions or rather not transactions, but – uh, if you're a player who – Decker is a wide receiver, I want to say, yep. correct? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, if He's you're a, a wide receiver back. and if he has the choice yeah, – slot back, nice. <laughs> if you have the choice to play to get passes for Peyton Manning and juice your stats, why would you go to the New York Jets who have a pile of garbage – Playing well, in QB or no one? I don't even know. It's like well, do they have I mean, Vic as a quarterback, or well, they have Gino. No, they have Gino Smith is going to be their They're keeping starter. Gino, but but yeah. they also have Vic though, right? Okay, they have Vic, but I just read something that said like he wasn't he didn't care enough about. Uh, no, the problem was they brought him in as a backup, back. and then there was a new story going around that like. Uh, oh, he didn't show enough passion to even try, and he's like, "Well, you brought me in as a backup, but that story kind of ended up uh, fizzling out." Um, mm. So, to but answer, that bad for you in the long. That's bad in the long term, though. If you're going to be, you know, you're a wide receiver, you want to get more money down the road. Yeah, exactly. You want to get more money. Okay. If you haven't seen the ESPN uh, 30 for 30 documentary, broke. I recommend everybody go check <laughs> it out immediately. It's very it's good, informative but depressing at the same time. So. I've heard. I've heard t- t- tales of that. Decker's just looking to get paid, man, and uh, paid the now. Broncos didn't really show much interest in him uh, when he when he signed. They got they got to worry about Demarius Thomas next year. They got to worry about you know all these guys they brought in um, um, on defense and keep Talib and and things like that. So um, there's there's a number of spots they were interested in, and you know having another Wes Welker like receiver was was not one of them. So instead mm-hmm. of getting paid nothing. By the Broncos because they weren't interested. He ended up getting, I think, you know, seven seven million a year with the with the New York Jets. But you know, football contracts work. I mean, it's it's thirty six point five with uh, four hundred thousand dollars guaranteed or something stupid like that. So right, yeah. He's uh, but the Andy he, Dalton he contract was like a hundred and five million, and the guarantee right. was like twenty. 
what? Yeah. on earth. They, they always people like announcing those huge numbers. They're like, oh my gosh, Andy Dalton doesn't deserve that, and the team will bear that out. If they and want it to. differs too between contracts. Like everyone's like, oh, Kaepernick's gonna be a huge thing, and they're like, ah, he's got some incentives in there that are really hard to hit. Do you know? Oh, you get five hundred thousand if you make the AFC Championship game, or five hundred thousand if you make the Super Bowl, or something like that. And all that's built into the contract on the final number, but right. you know, it's, it's not necessarily the case. Kobe Bryant in the NBA, he signs two years for $48 million. He played like four games last year. He gets $24 million for that season. Derrick Rose hasn't played a game in like two years. He gets all the monies on his contract. Yeah. It's all guaranteed. It's all guaranteed. Contract. You play one game, you play no games, you play 82 games, you play 96 games into the playoffs. It's, it's, it's your money. Now, in the NBA, like the NHL, is that, uh, that money isn't coming from the team. It's coming from insurance, right, if you're injured? Uh, yeah, possibly, but you're okay. still getting right. paid on, from the, on the player yeah. side. So the NFL right. okay. contracts all have workout bonuses, and um, you know if you're on the if you're not on the game time roster, you probably don't get paid for that game and things like that. So right. What Plus, was, with all sports, you, you only preference? get paid during the season. Yeah, that's also like true. it's like hold on to them paychecks because come January they are no longer there. Yeah, or like uh, for the NHL, they don't get paid for any part of the Stanley Cup playoffs. None. Yeah, as soon as regular season ends, they get no paychecks because exactly. it comes weekly. Exactly. Yeah, that's all it is. So they're just playing at that point, just out of the goodness of their hearts. <laughs> now, I mean, good for them. Yeah. Their paychecks are a little <laughs> bit are a little bit more than mine, so they can probably like scooch by for a couple months. Um, yeah. But still, it blew my mind that God. there's like a pension in the NHL. It's Why? Like, I, because even the the league minimum is I don't know what I don't remember what it is now, but it's like what five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, but you pay into a pension and you you get the returns on that. With the money in there, it's good to have the pension in there. I don't, I don't know why you would. I don't know. I just. I guess I would just not have a pension in a in a league that is that that has that much money in it. Doesn't make as much. Doesn't make that much sense to me. Yeah, well, not everyone's as good at handling money. I guess. So if you, I you guess. know, it's part of the CBA that people are saying, well, look. If this, this and this is happening and guys are only playing four years and they're getting injured or if guys aren't good at handling their money or, or whatever, what have you, then then they pay into the pension. And it works out for everybody. All right. You know what, Alex? You've won me over. Yeah, you just protect you know, the players the best you can, especially if you're in the PA. I mean, why would the PA just go, you know what? We're doing okay. Uh, <laughs> probably don't need a pension. You guys just you know do whatever like that. We're good. Yeah. And then also watch Broke again. Now that I realize oh, please watch that. Broke. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's and unbelievable. Then please don't tweet that I'm an idiot because they are mostly right specific in this case to the NFL and the NBA and the average playing, right. you know, um, career, and then the uh, the the amount of players that are declaring bankruptcy after you know two, three, five years out of the league is like seventy percent. Even guys like Allen wow. Iverson or Bernie Kosar, who were stars on their team, just piddled it away. Yeah, I mean the only the only complaint I'll have about broke is that I think it's ninety minutes and it could easily be twenty or forty. Like it's not. There's it absolutely go... no narrative to the documentary. No. It's all talking <laughs> heads with no narrative just, in between. I got paid this much money. I did this with that money. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> but I love... This this guy had an entourage. They did this crazy thing. This guy tried to get us to buy Krispy Kreme franchises. Yeah. But, but uh, well, the, you, the you Herm Edwards that? discussion with the players, now they have at least a course for players coming into the league. And, then, like, Herm right. Edwards was teaching it. And it was just hilarious. You want a car? One car. That's all you need. You want a <laughs> chain? One gold chain. Don't need the <laughs> Mr. T status set. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I do. Amazing. I mean, I don't get What a great guy to teach lot... that course. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, Those guys great. buy a lot of cars. And Whoa. I think that's also, you don't need that many cars. They all they they just yeah they they all want to. It's an odd thing when you see more money than you ever ever seen in your life uh, on a on a check the dollar Especially amount the and NBA, then your name until, next to it. It's up insane. until like six years ago, you were a high schooler and you were you know you could go right to the NBA. It was rare, but like LeBron James' right. mom bought him like a Hummer, took out a loan on a Hummer when he was a senior in high school because they just knew he was going to get paid a ton of money. Oh but my god! Still, I mean, that's for him, still but in general. Listen, <laughs> it's still, it's what if he still, blows out his knee in the first? I'm year? saying exactly what I'm saying. He can it's afford the Hummer, sports. but I mean, yes. come on. It's it's still sports. I mean, every time you step onto the court or the field or sk- skate onto the ice, you're taking a risk. Uh, and there is this guy 
Oh gosh. Well, I guess you see it at the end of every like training camp. But uh, there was a guy recently like broke his neck or something, or, or his ACL, and he's just out for the season, just like that. You know, it's yeah. it's uh, David it's a Wilson heck of a thing. had a broken neck, a running back for the New York Giants. I think that's the guy I mean. And, and they're, they're just done like, forever. Yeah, you're. Yeah, he's done never forever. Play football again. He's like, yeah, yeah you're never no, play football he's like, again. No, no, I'm good. And they're like, no, you, you're really not. You literally are. Please aren't. do nothing physical ever again. Exactly. Don't mow your lawn. Exactly. Don't reach for the top shelf of the grocery well, store. Well, it's like, and I take it back to pro wrestling. Like I always do. Edge was told he can't take a, a, a bump again, or else he can die because his neck was so so bad. I just got finished watching. He's got the decade of decadence kind of DVD set on uh, Netflix. It's about nine hours right. of Edge matches uh, covering between. Between – well, it's, it's actually – it's way better than it sounds. Between 98 and 08 and the style he wrestled was so – he does a, a Hell in a Cell match with Undertaker at SummerSlam 08 and it's so it's so violent. And it's like, no kidding. No, no wonder this guy's hurt his neck. You know, same with Daniel Bryan. He, he wrestles very stiff style, takes those, you know, those head butt bumps from the top rope. He does those flying drop kicks with a flat back bump like Steve Austin advises him to do. But he's, he's hurt himself because he works so Nick hard. Nick Foley can barely it's, walk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, then that, that like was, he does stand-up uh, comedy and he can't stand up during it. He has to like sit on a, on a oh. stool. So these guys – have found life after wrestling, you know, to talk about the wrestling days. Edge has that cushy gig on Haven, which is, which is great for him. Uh, Daniel it's Bryan, I'm like sure. Right, behind, right around us. Yeah. He's, he's, uh, if you bump into him, tell him to get on the triple head podcast. We'd love to have him. Uh, but you know, uh, actually, uh, Ian Hanlon, friend of the show, he saw Mick come into his restaurant and he's like, the guy's massive. He's hugely, like, he's very tall, way taller than he thought, way larger than he thought, makes a big cat. B- but he's like, he, he looks wow. like the punishment he's taken. He's a, he's a big, he's a big, he's a big cat. But he looks like he can barely, he looks like he's crippled. He's surprised he doesn't have to have a, a, wheel, a walker or, or, you know, a wheelchair or something. But he's doing these stage shows now where he can just kind of sit there and, uh, and, and, and talk. For hours and hours and entertain people. I listened to a Steve Austin podcast featuring James Harris. Now, James Harris, you might not recognize the name because back in the day, he played Kamala. Is he the NWA? The Ugandan oh, Giant. Oh, right. Now you're thinking about James Storm, Cowboy James Storm. So, right, okay. Yeah, James, I mean, that's interesting. Cause James health issues. Sugar Bear Harris uh, was, was Kamala, and he had diabetes, and he has to have both his legs underneath his knee. Or I think just above the knee, he had to have both his legs amputated. Uh, so that's kind of how he's living out his, his twilight years. But he stopped wrestling he as of big, 2011. Though. He was big. He's a big. He's a big dude. Yeah, he's a really big dude. Uh, he's written a book too, but that's neither here nor there. We'll review the Kamala book uh, next week. But you know, sports <laughs> next week. Next week, we're all gonna get on it. Well, I think I don't think it's actually published yet. So that, that's my excuse. But like I said, you know, don't. Luis Guzman said, I n- never trust anything until a check clears. Don't spend your money before you get it, for the love of God. Even if you know it's coming to you, until you, you have it in your hand, you know, theoretically, of course, most money's just electronic. But until you have it in your account, until it is yours, it is your legal tender, don't spend it. Also, don't spend more than you make, but that's not for me to say because I'm terrible with money. <laughs> I always say live below your means, folks. Uh, sorry, I just, just finished my, my third Voss water in a row. Water my, <laughs> water my plants with them. <laughs> uh, so anyway, back to football, which we kind of got yeah, off the rails hey. with. But uh, Maddie, are you in Well, you I'm saying you football? can – Oh yeah! Uh, just let me get this right, out. Just let me get this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, go, I, do, go. Yeah, I, I do fantasy football. Yeah, I remember last week I was talking about how I was promised a player, and then that person traded that player without talking. Right, I think right, you said right. it capped the kneecaps. That person has not gotten back to me yet. Have you? Why. So you drafted already? I drafted. He's ducking and one. I and I, he is ducking me. Uh, two weeks, like three weeks ago. Oh my god! You gotta you can't way do that. Recently. That's no, way too early. Not, it's ridiculous. I'm not, I'm not in control of the league. <laughs> How many people? I'm are probably in gonna the take a break from it next year anyway. How many I'm people are in the league? Oh, it's this league is obscenely large. It's too what? many. Hold on, I'm gonna see if I can bring it up. I'm serious. That makes even less. What, sense what's what's a what's a manageable amount of people to have in a twelve football is league? the most Eight. you would ever want to have. Twelve. Okay, um, I'm promising you right now, it's more than twelve. Why? 
that ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is beside himself this. right now. This is right great. Now. I love it because you're, you're so uh, upset. In, in shock, and it's not my. Res- it's not even uh, anything I could help. I'm you just did your draft three league. weeks ago, and it's a if it wasn't <laughs> team league. Like who is <laughs> on your team? I'll take I'll take Richard Mendenhall. Okay, he retired last year, but yeah, go for it. <laughs> oh shoot. Okay, baby. so I have I it here. I get the oh, Montreal Alouettes defense, so that's okay, good. Okay, maybe it's not as bad. Maybe it's not bad. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, this is three, almost as fun 12, as Googling. Five, six. Yeah, I think it is 12. <laughs> you think it is 12? <laughs> it's 12. Just count I'm looking it. 12. Okay, 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 here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There it is. Good okay. job, guys. There you go, okay. folks. We counted it so twelve twice in a row. Two wide receivers, two running backs, a flex, a defense, and a kicker. Uh, where am I? Yes. Who's your that QB? That is correct. Uh, I lucked into. I, I I like this one. I like Nick Foles. I got him. Ugh. I'm not displeased. I like it. That's your know. starting quarterback. <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna lay some truth down here. That's your starting quarterback, though. I, I had an engagement on the night of the draft. Oh, you're married. The auto draft, which is useless. Oh, no, it's no, not. No, you can no, set no. it up to be good. I know I can set it up, but even then, you even can't then. Miss who's the your draft backup under any circumstances? My backup quarterback is the legendary oh, God, Josh God. McCown. Oh, oh my God. You're the gonna get destroyed Buccaneers? this year. You're running yeah, back. That's fine. Better be I'm taking a break. I, Sean I take McCoy, fantasy. Adrian Peterson, <laughs> and Jerome Bettis. Oh, that's crazy. I have Jerome really, yeah, Bettis. That's exactly right. I definitely okay. don't have Matt Forte and Demarco Murray as my starters. That's okay. For... Those are good. Those are that's a good. My game. starting <laughs> quarterback <laughs> yeah, is, real good. is my starting quarterback is Cordell Stewart. No, oh Do you, I got I got Jordy Nelson wide receivers. Is that, is that worth anything? Yeah, he's good. He's, uh, good. he's pretty good. Yeah, he's, he's, he's pretty okay. good. Uh, okay. Uh, like an, Alex, why do why arm. do you bring up uh, fantasy football? Yeah, why is well, no, so I just had a draft on Saturday, and then I have a draft yeah, okay. tonight. Uh, well, you have two. Oh, you, you have two double. leagues. I, I don't like doing double because then you leagues. think that you're doing really well. And then you're like, oh, wait, I just have so many different players. This happened players. so much last year where I'd be like, yes, I'm going to destroy in this crap. Everybody in the other league I'm playing has all my players that I have in the other league. So you'd be like, right. there's no way I can win both leagues. Yeah, it's pretty painful. Yeah, week to week. Then Rodgers got very injured. frustrating. That was brutal. Yeah, uh, I anyway, had that. So yeah. first time ever, I have the first overall pick in my draft, which is why. And I don't Whoa. like it at all. I don't want it. Well, where do you go with that? Because you go first, maybe? it's a snake draft. So if I go first, I don't right. draft again 20, until twenty twenty one, and then I don't draft again until forty forty one or thirty nine forty or whatever it ends up being. But it's just like, ugh. Yeah, like you know, I'm just gonna be watching like AJ Green, Lashawn McCoy, Jamal Charles, like Des. Oh yeah, Bryant, you're gonna like, be watching Ur- Pro Bowl. Just, just, yes. just, just get Gone. knocked down. And I find the drop off from like one to five to be very minimal. So, like, 2021, I can still pick up some good guys, but I don't know. I think I'm going Adrian Peterson. I I, I don't know. Hmm. Leslie hmm. Frazier is gone over there. It's Mike Zimmer. North Turner's the the offensive coordinator now. The the quarterback situation's looking semi-decent, so I think there's a chance. So Are they we'll playing see. inside? Or, it's no, him or Jamal they're Charles. They're outside, aren't they? And I don't trust Jamal Charles as much. Does it worry you that they're playing outside? No. No? Okay. They weren't before. Now they are. That's what I I'm didn't saying. Factor that in though. Now I am worried. I take that hey, back. Man. There you go. <laughs> then, yeah. Because I'm pretty sure they're playing. Football's sure they're meant playing to be played outdoors. outdoors. If your team plays in a state in a in a dome, they're the worst team in the league. <laughs> no, you you are right. Take, Colts take fans, Saints. Saints fans. The previously the point and of football is so to, bad to play on it TV. In, it looks so yeah, bad. It, 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 the point of football is to play it in any condition. It's supposed yes. to be, you know, uh, uh, Carlin had that great about bit about uh, comparing football to baseball. He's like, football, we play in the rain, the sleet, the snow, can't see the names of the, can't see the numbers on the players, can't see the lines on the field. You know, that that's the way football is meant to be played. I'm proud to say my yes, favorite team, absolutely. Baltimore Ravens, plays in the nice, the beautiful uh, M&T Bank Stadium out there in Baltimore, Maryland. Your, your boys out there in, uh, in Foxborough, Massachusetts, play at the I, Gillette I like Stadium. Foxborough. Gillette, I, like, I just wish that there was. I wish that there wasn't a huge gap there. It makes sense. I wish it was just a complete bowl. I understand. Yeah, so yeah, that get, that's, a weird, cities, that's weird. That's weird. That's but, but Gillette's you, got like a really weird uh, configuration, and it's got that big red section too. That's seemingly never full. Club level, yeah. No one's. Well, yeah, it's know. like Leafs fans uh, Alex, all go there. You you've been uh, yeah. 
and they'll be there at the end of the second period and then leave. Exactly. You've been you, – I think you're the only one of us – no, no, I, I've been to uh, the soon-to-be-closed-down uh, uh, Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Uh, Al, but, Alex, you've been to uh, Reliance Stadium in Houston. I think we've talked about this before. But uh, I've been to how, How's that place? Too, that, 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 oh, yeah, but not for, not for a game. But uh, actually – and my thing wasn't for a game either, so – that's neither here nor there. So, okay, well, which stadium do you like better? Which one's which one's newer? Do you know out of the two? Out of Foxborough and and, and, and Reliant. Gillette and Reliant. Yeah, is that it's called? Reliant. It actually it was Carl. Reliant when I went there. I think now it's called like NRG Stadium, like Energy. Oh, I think they yeah, changed. Yeah, okay, the name. that makes sense. Reliant was interesting because the Astrodome is literally right beside it. Like the old Astrodome is like I could reach out and touch it basically when I was walking by. So they're tearing it down, but. I don't know. Right. Reliant was nice. The weather wasn't that great when we were there. It was overcast. It was like 20 degrees Celsius, I want to say. So Do they play with the, the retractable time. roof? They play there? with a half retractable yeah. roof, and they have a 50-80 yeah. rule or something like that. If the temperature is oh, between okay. 50 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, then it goes. Because if it's 80 degrees outside, inside the stadium, it's 97 degrees nice. with the roof open. Yeah. So they close it's the roof good. if it's above 80 degrees. Yeah, it sucks hot. if it's oh, okay. 79 and it feels like 96 in the stadium, but that's not really my problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so Reliant cool. was, I don't know, really nice. We sat in the club seating um, kind of in the back end, corner end zone. So that, was, That's got to nice. add to the experience too, right, the club seats. You think about like you're like, I want to be on the 50-yard line. and blah, blah, blah. But if you're there for your first game, you're like, I, don't, I can see everything that's happening right now. I can yeah. see mm-hmm. oh, it's, sure. it's amazing. It's amazing. Mm. We got to talk about Mosaic Stadium in Regina. That's not. Yeah, or BC Place. How great that is! BC Place Stadium in in uh, Vancouver. One of the remaining. You have a very yeah. You live in a city with an incredibly advanced and like stadium there too. NFL quality. Uh, It is. Yeah, it's a beautiful stadium. It really is. Uh, It'd be nice if if a better team played in it. But I think BC Place (laughs) is one of the, the few remaining stadiums in North America not named after. A company. I think they wanted to call it Telus Place. I think Telus might have some interest in it, uh, but it's one of the only stadiums or, or arenas not named, uh, not with a even the, even that old Halifax Metro Center has a has a stadium name now. It has a, really? What is it? Yeah, Scotia Bank Center. Oh, what doesn't they, Scotia they Bank lost, own? They, no, it's they, not well, the they lost uh, they, they lost the naming for uh, Ottawa, so they wanted to make yeah, it up for Halifax. Halifax. But that's Morton's at least field. like semi fitting. It it's has the Hamilton. word Scotia in it. It's not like, you know, that's right. true. It's TD it's of in, Nova uh, Scotia. In, in Boston. In Boston, right. yeah. That's, that's hilarious to me. Or BMO Field in Toronto. My, my, I think Scotia. one of my least favorite stadium names is the Quicken Loan Center in Cleveland. <laughs> no, Smoothie <laughs> King Center University in of New Phoenix Orleans. Stadium. No, no, no. It's the it's this, uh, it? Sleep King Center in Sacramento. No, oh, Smoothie gross. King. I think Smoothie Sleep King Center. King. They had the Hall of Fame ceremony for the WWE this year and the Smoothie King Center. Hi, mm-hmm. folks. Well, welcome to the Smoothie King Center. We're now going to induct... Uh, you know the Ultimate Warrior in the Hall of Fame, like in the it's King a total. So, it's not Sleep King, sorry. It's a madhouse here. It's Sleep Train Arena in oh Sacramento. Sleep Train. Yeah, well, the Bridgestone Arena in the Sleep Nashville train. used to be known as the Gaylord Entertainment Center for years, for years and yeah. years. Pr- Gaylord Entertainment yeah. Center. Uh, what else is there? At least it was the last name that made sense. But yeah, Sleep Train is insane. Sleep oh, apparently, train. ironically, this, the arena set a Guinness World Record for loudest sports war by hitting. Reaching 126 decibels in November of last year, which I'm sure was probably beaten by any other stadium. Yeah, oh, good for them in the country. Uh, good for them. Good and for them. Well, was that, Joe, the, let's see. There's what, also what was the question, Alex. I said, "What stadium set the decibel?" It's the Seattle Seahawks one, right? Right. Yeah. This is a. This is. Uh, yeah. It's not called Quest though anymore, is it? No, it was. It was. It was Quest. It was Century. It's been CenturyLink for a couple of years now. CenturyLink, oh, right. that's what it is. It's, yeah, you know, it's the same company. The company CenturyLink... itself just changed its name. Yeah. From course, the CenturyLink. Uh, that's a nice – I'd like to get there for a game sometime, but I, I don't – I mean, I'm not much of a Seahawks fan, but if, if I get uh, the right amount of monetary support behind me, I, I think I'd head down to just have experience you, have you an seen NFL the game. And... Richard Richard Sherman, uh, like Campbell Chunky Soup commercial? Uh, I've not yet. It's well, one speaking of, the of Sherman, I have something else I've ever is seen. It? Okay. Yeah, uh, check it well, out. I'll definitely it's, check it's it out. But speaking of Richard like, it's Sherman, it's a minute long new, and you don't know what's about soup till the end. The new <laughs> the new Madden game, uh, Madden 15, 
which is 10 less than the game they released last year, has uh, <laughs> come out. Uh, I've read a review that says uh, it's fun to play Madden again, which I feel they write that review every year. But this time on defense. Yeah, I have last year's Madden. It was great. Yeah, I enjoyed 25 a lot. But this year, apparently on defense, you actually, you know how if you look at the screen, if your offense are heading up, you know what I mean? Right. This time, if you're playing the computer, the defense is facing the same way, too, when you're playing as defense. So you're facing up toward the offense. So you can do more on what? defense. Yeah, apparently it's, it's, apparently you can do it's way more, more fun but to you play. have to. You, you got to get used to it. It doesn't make sense to me because you would because in defense you're setting up for what's behind you, for zone defense and for man defense. How would that work in a practical sense if you're if that what's happening is actually behind you? That's a good point. I think it's more so for like a like a pass rushing to to okay, get, that up, makes sense. get up get up. That makes thing. sense, but I, it was never an issue for me with defense. I just got used to it. Yeah, I, I sucked at it. Uh, I'm terrible at defense. I can't play it, but I'll I'll pick up Madden. Just always do blitz. Point. It always works. Yeah, I, I'd like to see NFL blitz come back. We've mentioned that on this show before. Uh, oh, sorry. I meant the literal uh, play blitz, but yeah, I'd like blitz back too. But I think uh, next week as we get closer to the NFL season, I think what we should do uh, – what I'd like to do is maybe do a little breakdown of the NFL divisions – We'll each grab a grab a division and kind of do our put our sports uh, writer caps on and do our best to kind of analyze divisions instead of because we could talk about our two favorite teams all day, but that's you know two teams in one conference uh, in two separate divisions. But let's you know I'd rather cover the breadth of the league, and I got some research to do because I got my uh, fantasy football draft on Monday where we have five keepers and my keepers aren't really that great and five that keepers be, is too be many today for the record. Which would be today, of course. Yeah, How like can I have I... one tonight, which is yes. uh, my, you know, when I have a first round. And I had one stuff. on Saturday that went really well. Because <laughs> yeah. I'll draft nine months before the season starts. Like, Matt, day after the Super yeah. Bowl. All right, Not draft. my choice. Draft for next year. <laughs> I'm drafting Russell draft Wilson now. first overall. The Russell, i got to do Russell Wilson. I'll get Peyton. The rosters are set. So oh, be- be- before we get into the NFL, and I think we talked about the NFL quite a bit this week, but um, yeah. before the NFL season starts, the uh, summer movie season wraps uh, with the uh, this week's Labor Day uh, releases, of, of which I think I'll see none of, um, which is terrible grammar on my part. Uh, sorry, Mr. Boylan. Um, we have uh, I have here what we had for our summer movie preview back uh, a couple months ago. We did it, I think, around May. Uh, we did our, our stinkers, our clinkers, and our surprises or, or dark horses for the summer. So oh these God, were. I don't even want to know. Yeah, Alex, I think you. Did I do the worst? I think I did pretty well, though. I mean, no, it's, it's cool. okay. It's not. First of all, it's not a contest because you can measure success in of a summer movie in, in two ways, right? If it's critically revered or if it's commercially successful. And I think we've been over the fact that this summer's movie season uh, box office is down quite a bit from from last year. Maybe with the World ES. Cup has something to do with that. I, I'm not entirely I know we sure. Can do, I, I know Global how we can do warming. this. This is, this is perfect. So this is what, this is what we do. Okay, we take critical success and we take financial success. So for financial success. We say how much over their budget did they oh, go? And see, I send each other. Yeah, I didn't. See, we don't have any okay. of this set up, Matt. So no, we'll, I have. I have wow. the. Okay, so I have. How quickly do you think we can <laughs> crunch those numbers? No, let's, okay, let's, everybody, let's everybody not, just hold on. Let's not crunch those numbers. If you're Let Matt, me go get if you're my graphing numbers, calculator. Yeah. The, okay. Yeah. Let's just. <laughs> None of the money we're we'll talking about is going to us. In fact, none of the, some of it came from us. Actually, none of it came from us because all of it will go to you. Won't it? You get paid for being yeah, in the movie. Yeah, well, come on, you're going to be the beneficiary. Of something. You don't, no, you don't I, I don't get any movies. back end. I don't get any back end. No, but you still get what... money from the movie that was out. Yeah, but they pay me. But they pay me in December for the movie that yeah. came out in August. It's an so... investment in you, and then you either see what their I ROI understand. is come yeah. now. Yes. Okay. I under. I get whatever. Support your local <laughs> film and television industry, folks. So we went over our uh, in our preview. Went over our stinkers, and for for me, I said uh, this summer a stinker would be Transformers. And how mm-hmm. wrong was I? Now the movie I didn't like. It actually it's really bad. It might have been the. It actually more. The more I think about it, it's probably the third best in the series. So I think one's the best, three's the second best, even though I don't remember anything that happened in it. Uh, this one and then two was the worst. Uh, so this movie... Have you seen it, all it was, of them? All the Transformers? Yeah. 
Yeah, in theaters. Yeah, I saw every single one in oh theaters. Why would you? Why? Proud, proud to say. Because I'm a completionist, guys. And even if I don't, <laughs> even if I will suffer through it, I will suffer through it just to be a completionist. Your I your actually know. habits are Listen, astonishing. Listen, I'll, I'll tell you later on, I'll tell you a movie I saw yesterday. I had to squeeze it in before going into work because I wanted to talk about it today. I almost had to steal a movie from the internet that I couldn't get in time to talk about it today. <laughs> Uh, okay. All, all these movies, all the movies on the list, except for two, I've I've seen, and I made it. I made a point to see it. Actually, except for three, but three is a big asterisk. So, bottom line is Transformers. Um, so commercially, Matt, you said last week it made you know one point oh six billion worldwide. Something I've seen like that. My domestic buttload, uh, total buttload that of I have. Buttload o cash. My domestic total that I have in front of me here is two hundred forty three million, and that which is in the budget was like two hundred ten or something like that. I don't remember. It made money though. Uh, Transformers global though. Global was over a billion. Yeah, global was over a billion. Yeah, Transformers four made some money, and the movie itself was was okay. Matt, your pick for stinker was Ninja Turtles. Uh, I have Ninja Turtles box office one hundred forty five million, which is over their budget, I believe. Okay. Okay. I mean, com- com- uh, critically, it didn't do well. Like both those movies, we chose correctly in terms of critically. Those people did not like those movies. I think there was a uh, there was a theme the whole okay. summer of just like a, a general. I, I might talk about this at the shrug. end. But there's a general, general safeness the going on in. Uh, there's yeah. a safeness going on in movies because there's so much money being involved that nobody really wants right. to take a big chance. So even like uh, original ideas that aren't based on a sequel or previous work, they're just kind of like. Here's our movie, and, and, and there wasn't anything really special or captivating about it. So I like to see some more risks being made in the, in the film world. Uh, but I understand it, why, because it's a business. I get that. Yeah, but, but I, you I, gotta. I, but but in, in business, you gotta make. You gotta take a chance. You gotta make a gamble, right? right. Well, in this case, you kind of don't. You know, if you I mean, if you if you're a, a studio and you have okay, I have the rights for this many sequels in front of me. You know, ten of these seem like slam dunks, and you're kind of you're okay for money that way. But mm. yes, you do have to come up with original material to have sequels, which is a very depressing sentence to say. But yeah, yeah, that's true. Ninja Turtles, uh, yeah, 145 million. Alex, uh, your pick for a stinker was <laughs> Jupiter Ascending, a movie that was so <laughs> bad. Oh no, it did not come out. Well, you they and kicked you didn't it know to it the time. <laughs> they kicked they the winter, it to so it could be ignored. Yeah, exactly. That's actually not no, a bad pick. It to I'm actually kind of impressed with that pick. It was you so should bad. Be. They wouldn't yours, put it out. yours is the biggest stinker People of all, Alex. Yeah, that probably yeah. won't make anything. I mean, we, we're still. <laughs> no. That's a big asterisk there. We we don't know how well that's going to do until down the I road. We got to come back to that. We got to come back. To completely that. forgot about that. that oh, but uh, so <laughs> so I'm going to go right off the bat, Alex. Your clinker, your pick for the surefire hit. You were not as accurate this time. Because you've picked oh, no. Frank Miller's Sin City, A Dame Sin to City. Kill For, which yeah. made about 10% of its budget in the first oh, weekend. That's, yeah. that's made really Made $6 million. Dollars. And the the movie itself I, I watched, visually it's it's very impressive, but it's not as good as the first one. It's it's just a – it's – the, the main arc, the, the, the Dame to Kill For arc, I don't even know if that's the, the name of the, the story, but that's the least interesting arc of all. I think Joseph Gordon-Levitt's arc is, is probably my favorite. Uh, and I read that he turned down uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and one other movie just to do Sin City. Well, I mean, good for him anyway. Like Star-Lord? Well, good for him anyway. Good for him I, anyway, maybe, right? Because he's yeah, doing no, no, exactly right. what you want him to do. He's he's doing something more interesting and he was, now. He was, right? great, nah, he was great in the... He was great in the part, but I'm just saying, like, you know, as, as, as far as movies go, you can p- be in either Guardians of the Galaxy, which is domestically right. the biggest movie this summer, or you can be in right. Sin City, which unfortunately would probably go down as the biggest flop of the summer in, oh, a, in sure. a summer with a couple of them. So Sin City, Dan Please? McKill for, um there was some recasting stuff in that. They have uh, Dennis oh, okay. uh, Hayes. Uh, oh, shoot. I even met the guy at a table read one time. but uh, Dennis Haysworth. He uh, takes over for Michael Clark Duncan's part because Michael Clark Duncan unfortunately passed in the years between the sequels. And we also have Josh Brolin who plays Dwight, who was Clive Owen's character in the first movie. And they had that line in the first movie about how Clive Owen, I think Brittany Murphy, who also unfortunately passed between the sequels, has a line to him about how he changed his face. And they actually wanted to get Clive Owen to do this because at one point in this movie, spoiler alert, he gets the plastic surgery done. 
and he he changes his face, but he's supposed to change from Josh Brolin to Clive Owen. But Clive Owen wasn't available because he was shooting his uh, HBO series The Nick, and they just kind of put some stuff on Josh Brolin's face to make him look a little bit different. But it was really kind of – it was really uh, – yeah, it was just distracting, kind of off-putting. Um, so Sin City – um, unfortunately, I can't recommend because at some point you just get tired of the pastiche of this uh, city. I'll tear you wide open. I was, you know, Sunday night and I was I was drunk. You know, uh, you get kind of tired of the film war thing. Uh, I, but uh, I uh, I digest. Uh, my pick for the the surefire hit was X Men: Days of Future Past. Uh, Good by choice. my cal- yeah, by my choice, two hundred thirty two million dollars, and it was a great film. I think it was uh, it was good. It was one of the, the probably one of the smartest comic book movies to come out this summer. I would I would say one of the most with one of the ones with the most political intrigue, and uh, it's a nice history lesson for all the kids out there. So that was my pick for the clinker. That was a good pick, Matt. Your pick for the clinker was uh, uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and that was a good movie too. We we reviewed it on this uh, very show, and Matt that made about two hundred three mil. So that. You know, was a success also. Why I picked Guardians of the that. Galaxy? That was door was none of us, open and there. and I was and and that I'm going to come to that at the end. Well, I might as well come to that at the end now. I mean, for me, the, the surprise of the summer was Guardians of the Galaxy. That was yeah. a surprise, and it was also you know, like we said, domestically the most successful. Um, it was the only movie I saw twice, and I enjoyed it both times. I enjoyed it I've quite quite it. a bit. Okay, so I recommend you, Alex. Which of these on the list have you seen? Oh, I saw Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And that was it? That. The Dawn, okay. I don't know. Have we, have we finished the list yet? No, I have not finished the list, and I apologize. So okay. for surprises... I saw Captain uh, America. For surprises, I'm going to go to... But that was in April. It wasn't part of the summer. For surprises, I'm going to go to the one movie... One of the movies I haven't seen, which is 22 Jump Street. Oh, I did see that and one. That was... Matt, that was your pick. Uh, and that yeah. made $190 million. And it's a comedy, pretty low budget to begin with so so that was a success and i i haven't that. seen it but the word of mouth is really uh, positive on it alex you do you like it yeah it's pretty all right it's not as good as the first one but it's good it's uh, it's it has yeah. its value has its value it has value so, right uh, it's worth checking out good uh your your pick alex for the surprise of the summer was hercules. Johnson in hercules which made 69 million dollars domestically which is less than its budget Damn but it's... internationally it's made around 150 uh, and Dwayne, a, the movie, the movie's a, well. That's why Dwayne on his on his Instagram, he's really pushing the international touring. Like he's promoting the movie in in countries all over the world, and it's an action movie. Not a lot of talking, visually a lot of fighting, visually kind of a cool movie that would do well in foreign markets. Right. Uh, and my pick, uh, and the movie itself was not that great. I thought it was actually a bit of a disappointment. For for all yeah, well, Brett Ratner that I directed I it, so into. really, I mean, should have saw that coming. Yeah, I think it would have it would have been served better with a different director. Seems like such an that. ill-fitting person to to direct that movie, but that's just that's just me. Maybe Dwayne shouldn't direct. I wonder if he'd be good at it. Probably not. No, uh, my pick no. for the surprise of the summer, which I watched yesterday, and mm-hmm. it's not the surprise of the summer, is Let's Be Cops with Jake Johnson Ugh. and uh, and Damon Wayans Jr. And uh, I was wrong about the poster. The poster I saw on IMDb without their faces on it that I commented on back when we did the preview. I said the poster is just the title of the movie. The actual real poster has their faces on it. But their their comedic talents are wasted in this movie, I think. They could have been really played by anybody. They, they should have been given a longer leash to maybe improv some stuff. Because clearly, you know, from what we can see on New Girl, they're both very, very good at it. Uh, so I think that uh, this was a movie that played it a little bit too safe and reminded me of a better movie like about buddy cops, like 21 Jump Street, uh, that was um, far more enjoyable. So let's be cops, unfortunately. That made about $45 million. I don't know if that was on its budget or not. I think it made more oh, on its there's budget. There's no way the budget could be more than that, but that's that's disappointing. I kind of wanted to see that one, and now that might get – Yeah, I can't – wait, wait till it's on Netflix. Wait, wait till it's on Netflix. It's not an offensively bad movie. It's just, it's just nothing really special. And your time's better spent watching uh, Twenty Two Jump Street or Twenty One, you know, Twenty One Jump Street. Yeah, and the other movie I did not see on our list was our honor- honorable mention for If I Stay. But our our dear sweet <laughs> mother saw it and she said it was oh. uh, good. She enjoyed it quite a bit. Did she uh, talk she's about? She's a little bit. She's a little bit. Uh, well, yeah, she's a little bit biased. 
um, she said I was. She said I. She did. She said I did good. So you know, that's all I can ask there for. You go. Yeah, I'm just a little, a little, little role player in the movie. I do. I'm a, I'm a small part of a bigger picture. You've taken your first step into a larger world. Sorry, that was Star Wars. So the summer movie up. review. All right. Yes. Follow Sorry. up. I was just gonna say, let's be cops. The um, the budget was seventeen. Sorry. Yeah. So it made more than its budget. So that's that's. Fine. Yeah. Oh yeah. So summer movie review. Uh, I'm going to watch a lot of TV. I've decided it, it I think the, the TV Renaissance people keep talking about, I'm, I'm going to buy into that. I'm going to hit up my Netflix and catch up on a bunch of shows. I'm going to do my best to finish breaking bad. I'll probably start on, you know, a show like mad men or something to, just to see kind of what everybody's talking about. One show Have I've you not seen mad men. I've never seen a frame of it. One show oh, wow. I've, I know. And you've seen a frame of it. In some I've seen capacity. one frame. Dad watched a bit of an episode once. I, I read I read part of a review online once. I'm not a fan. I started watching. I'm three episodes into True Detective, which is the oh, HBO yeah. series that they aired uh, in the beginning of the year, and that's pretty magnificent. So I'm, I'm looking forward to September. You know, movie season's over. Stay at home, folks. Stay at home and, and watch your television, and, and that's what I'm looking forward to. Oh, also, I realize what I don't like about summer, guys. I know what I don't like about what summer. In the winter time. It, it, the winter time, you, you're outside and you're bundled up and it's cold, but you get inside and it's a respite. It's a respite ah, from the cold. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're, you're you're inside, safe and sound and cozy. Pour yourself a mug of cocoa or something. In the summertime, if you live in a city like Vancouver or Halifax, a city that does not have air conditioners in most apartments or homes, you go inside and it's it's worse. Yeah. It's so much worse. You got every window in the house open, but you can hear everything. Like I have to close my window to record this and I'm sitting in my bedroom schwitzing like crazy. I, I, that's what I don't like about the summertime is that you can't enjoy yourself at home. You're not comfortable in your own house. Can't wait for the winter yeah, time. Can't wait till I love fall. I love fall. I love when football season starts. I love mm. uh, when, you know, TV starts again. I, I'm really looking forward to it. So, you know, good, goodbye air conditioned movie theaters in the summer. Hello, my couch in the, in the fall and winter time. Cause I'm going to be spending a lot of time on it. That's what I'm looking forward to. And maybe after we do our NFL preview next week, we can do something of like a TV season preview. But I don't know if there's any like killer app show that – Mulaney. Mulaney. Yeah. Uh, good. That would be interesting to see. Yeah. That would be interesting to see. And we'll talk more that about that when we do our our uh, summer <laughs> our summer TV show preview next year, which will be America's Got Talent. AGT, baby. Oh my A-G-T. god. A G T. Uh actually the no one con. the one reality show the one the one reality show I watched this year was uh, Last Comic Standing just because it had a local guy on it named Lachlan Patterson. Oh. We actually made it to the Oh yeah, show. I remember you guys went to see you know, him uh, a while ago. Yeah, Lachlan we saw him uh, a couple years ago. He was very funny. He didn't win the whole thing. Actually the guy who I thought would was going to win uh, did win it. It's just a black comedian named Rodman who's uh who's a really funny dude. That's uh, but that's an enjoy is Rod Man. I don't know it's, it sounds like Rodman, but it's Rod Space Man. I don't know who like Mrs. Bad. Man who named him Rod is, but uh, well, whatever. Oh yeah, uh, so Will, I, yes, I, Matt, I texted you last night. I texted yeah, you okay, night. I was gonna good, good. This is good. a good, uh, this. this is Sunday a good segue. Yeah, is, guys, listeners, this is good. This is good. We're all we're all on the same page. Right this now. is as good a I'm segue not. as anyway. So <laughs> Alex is off. So I was. Uh, I'm in the middle of watching Breaking Bad. Uh, yes. As you, uh, my, the rate at which Emmy I'm winner it, for Emmy winner for what? Yeah. Best show of all time or something? Greatest show. Best ever drama ever? series. Oh jeez. Brian actor, Cranston drama, won. Whoever best plays Skyler won. Aaron Paul won. A lot of stuff. And watching True Detective, Matt. I think McConaughey was up against Cranston for best in a dramatic series. And well, because they uh, yeah they put it in as a dramatic nothing against series Cranston. And not a mini series. Nothing against Cranston, but man, McConaughey. You can't comment on this. You haven't seen else. it. You haven't seen Breaking Bad. I like the range. I, know, I, know. I like I'm the saying. range of Cranston more than McConaughey. I think McConaughey's range. Will has not seen Breaking, Breaking Bad. Bad. Your opinion so, is invalid. Okay. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm just saying that my this is my roundabout way of complimenting Cranston. That if he's going to best McConaughey, then he's obviously phenomenal because I thought McConaughey is phenomenal. In, in oh, McConaughey in that show is amazing and probably deserved to win if they put him in a, a miniseries instead of um, instead of dra- dramatic series or drama. And then right. it was kind of a flip of the coin at that point. I mean, Cranston wasn't really any better, but they were both just really, really good. 
Uh, Tour de Force, especially because McConaughey man. seemed kind of more off character, whereas you know Brian Cranston's kind of established that character. But yeah, you know, each their own. Ricky Gervais yeah. didn't win either, so yeah. Well, and, Do you but, like Ricky Gervais as an actor? I don't know. I haven't seen Derek. I just thought his yeah, me neither. He, he, I think he's, he read think his he, speech he at the funny, Emmys. Too. His winning speech and it was kind of funny. So after he lost, so it was kind of funny. <laughs> So during during my watching of Breaking Bad, by the way, I'm, and now I of course I have finished it, and I'm now watching a Better Call Saul. Oh, you're all done. Uh, you're not watching. No, Better I'm, Call not, Saul. I'm, I'm not. I'm not out yet. I'm, I'm yeah. not done. I'm, I'm outraged. Joking. I'm a joking. Uh, so I'm watching it, and uh, at one point in season five, there's an important character who shows up, and I'm like, that guy looks really familiar. And then I think, I wonder if he arrested my brother. And, no, he didn't. Uh, he was, didn't arrest me. He didn't arrest you, but he That's probably said first something thought. snappy. Lou, is it Lewis or Louis? I think it's Louis Ferreira. Is that right, Will? Uh, Louis, Louis Ferreira. Yeah. Is it Louis? Yeah, Louis Ferreira. So I it's saw him. And I was like, That's funny. Louis He's also worked with. Uh, yes, she, he, he also Eastern, worked with uh, uh, Sarah Canning, friend of the show, on uh, I believe Primeval New World. Uh, Louis, nice. yeah, I guess in a roundabout, roundabout way, he did arrest me. Yeah. And, so he uh, was. Yeah. So I saw him. And I was like, oh, that's neat. And then mm-hmm. we got talking about Breaking Bad, mm-hmm. and you mentioned that you uh, were murdered on screen by another guy who was in Breaking Bad. He shot me in the face, Damon Harriman, uh, yeah. who is was... a great, great, great role uh, in an earlier season where uh, he almost blows. Uh, never mind. Well, anyway, he almost there he almost hurts Jesse Pinkman. He basically. almost blows the horn. That's not an expression. But Damon is uh, – he's an Australian actor who uh, I worked with last year on the now canceled show Almost Human. And he uh, – in the in the show, I played a security guard and he – of like a diamond company or something. And he and a bunch of his cronies come in and just walk up and shoot me in the face and they take over the entire building. And uh, I worked with them for a few days, super nice guy. And then at my restaurant job, I see the director and Damon come in. And I'm like, hey, guys, this is my other job. This isn't at all embarrassing, only right. that it totally is. But uh, oh, they, were well, super, okay. they were super nice. Well, the director has. He's like, so uh, is acting – like, do you, do you want to be an actor like full-time or like what do you want to do? I'm like, well, obviously, okay, whatever. I don't know how many people <laughs> are just like, yeah, I'll just get a role here and there. But I guess there are those people, Working but I'm rubbing my forehead is my aggressively. Passion, but uh... – like, for, like yeah, for some people, then just to pay the bills. I, I do acting to torture myself. I really just I hate it so much, and uh, I truly believe that a man, uh, a man must break his back to earn his day of leisure. Thank you, John Lennon. Uh, but yeah, they were talking to me, and, and Damon was a super nice guy, and we actually got talking about um, you know careers and stuff, and they they were really nice to me. Damon was saying that in Australia. He did a role where he was like a, a nerd, you know, a prototypical nerd, like glasses and, and kind of nebbish, like, oh, you know, don't – like Lewis in um, in Ghostbusters or something like that. You know, right. you really should get your taxes done. But it, he said that um, once he moved to North America, he started playing bad guy roles. And I guess he's a bad guy on Breaking Bad if he menaces our, our hero, Jesse Pinkman. Uh, and he was a bad guy on Almost Human. So he was talking about how – it's interesting how you can get yourself typecast, you know, in Australia, all they can see him as, and probably not anymore, but all they could see him as is a nerd. And then he comes to North America, kind of rebrands himself and shows another side of himself. And now all of a sudden he can play a bad guy all the time. You know, there's, there's certain That's actors like, that play um, a, a bad like guy Anna. every time. Yeah. Cause he was a comedian yeah, yeah. over in Australia. Now he's much more of a, not serious actor, but I guess serious slash action. He, Guy and he's been in a couple comedies like um, funny funny people, people but like he doesn't that, play a funny really character a in it though. Role. No, yeah, I haven't, I I haven't seen him about, in, a, uh, in a slam bang in uh, comedy. Speaking speaking of Australia, I remember hearing about uh, I think uh, James Elroy, I want to say, who wrote the book L.A. Confidential, and he was he was doing a tour in Australia, and uh, he was like, yeah, this movie's actually going to be it's actually going to be filmed, and two of the actors, Russell Crowe and Guy Pearce, are, are, are in it. And the crowd just straight up didn't believe him because they are Australian actors. They're like, there's no way they're going to make a movie with two Australian actors playing L.A. They can't do it. They can't make a movie with, like, two Australian guys, like, playing playing the bloody L.A. cops. Wearing their sunnies around Los Angeles. It's impossible. (laughs) Which is funny because it's so bad at accents. They're so good. They're so good in that movie. (laughs) And it's so bad at accents. Oh, my God. I'm just going to lock myself in my... It's amusing. So amusing. Love it. It's too brutal. 
<laughs> uh, I wanted to get to our fan mail portion of the, of the podcast. I won't read yeah, I out loud who this is from, uh, but uh, it's it's a lady. She really enjoyed the show. She says, uh, oh hi, guys. God. Thanks. It was classy. Better than, well, let's just say that, in quotation marks, CL are important letters. Love, so-and-so. So I guess she said our <laughs> show would have been assy otherwise. Um, That's the impression okay. I got. Okay, yeah, sure. I don't, I don't know what that means. I don't know. That's very strange. I don't know what that means. Uh <laughs> That, 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 I'd say that about uh, hopefully we kept it not assy this week. I, I'd say that about wraps this. Uh, say that about wraps this whole shenanigan up. Anything else you guys want to add, Alex? Any other accents you want to try? Try for uh, Ukrainian. Go. No, oh, no, no, no. Okay. I'm no. Just, just hey, man. You never know until you uh, try. Matt, do you know? No. Do you have any accents in your in your quiver? Uh, I, whenever I try to do British, I come pretty close to Australian, but I'm. Uh... I feel like I would just do a bad job on the podcast. So this now is why, why I could do that. Do you, oh do you know what, what was that? That was very bad, but it's more New Zealand. I try a little bit. Because, okay, so uh, you gotta say what it is before you do it. Like I can make okay. an accent and then say it was whatever it sounded like, but you, I thought you're going for a British accent. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. So you this said, is when I go for I know, British I know, accent. I'm glad, I'm glad that you thought. Of okay, this is going to be another educational portion. This is how you do uh, an Australian accent. This is how you segregate it from a British accent because we all know Australia okay. was a British penal colony back in the day. Maybe okay. like well, uh, well, let's be well, appropriate. Well, well. Five let's or ten years ago. Hey, I'm just saying. Met a lot of guys named Dick down there. But this is a penal colony. <laughs> they <laughs> sent the British people on this boat. And this is kind of a joke, but they, they sent them all in this boat and they nailed them all in there. So they're all sealed in this boat and it's dark. So they're all in in the boat like, all right, let's go, go to Australia. And then they get out of the boat and they rip off the boards on the top. And this it, see, it's Australia. It's so bright. It's not like London where it's covered in clouds. So they just look up and they go, oh, it's so bright. Because what you do with an Australian accent what? is you open your mouth. You, you, you open the sides of it. So if you want to do a, a, an Australian accent, do a British guy being blinded by the sun. That's the key to a good Australian uh, accent right there. That's okay. my education. So what's the key to a good and, British uh, accent? An Australian guy with his mouth closed? The key, the key, to, a good, <laughs> the key to a good British accent is being born uh, in, uh, in the United Kingdom. That's my oh. that's my key to a good British accent, yeah. It's a little – Yeah, it's a little Scottish people are good – Scottish people have good uh, American accents or British accents. Now, what's part of the United no, – yeah, so the Scottish – okay, whatever. Is it – Northern Ireland is not part of the United Kingdom? Is that the part that's not – No, Northern Ireland is. It is part of it. Ireland Regular isn't. Ireland is not. So the okay. United Kingdom is Scotland, England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Correct. Hmm. And we and we come from ba- way back in the day. The Vaughn name comes from Wales, right? Am I correct? It, yes, it is Welsh. Okay, good. Sure. Well, there you go. Yeah. All, all, all you uh, people listening out in Wales, hey, you're our, you're our people. Uh, you can find me on Twitter.com, at William C. Vaughn. Uh, Alex, how can we find you on Twitter? Is it e, at Evonics? E-V-A-U-G-H-A-N-I-C-S. That's me. <laughs> okay. And Matt, you're at... What am I supposed to say? <laughs> that is right. Correct, sir. That is Story correct, sir. Yeah. Uh, Matthew, you're at MP Vaughn. Correct. Also yeah. correct. Yeah. MP uh, Vaughn. That's going to be very good. That's not synced up, guys. I any other – yeah, it wasn't synced up last week. I was a little disappointed. Uh, any other uh, people on Twitter that are fun to follow? Anybody? Any recommendations? Oh. Besides uh, us because we're I always great. like uh, New York Times Without Context is okay. the one I enjoy. Yeah. Um, that one is they just pick sentences and little bits from the New York Times. Oh, sorry, N- NYT minus context. So, for instance, the most recent tweet uh, from the 28th of August, for whatever reason, uh, is just the, just the phrase, have macaroni and cheese for dinner. That's it. And that's it. And that's something that all the listeners and, out and there before that, could have before found that on would, their own. <laughs> it said, it's kind of heartbreaking to know there are people. And that's it. So there's, so there's <laughs> minus context. There's no okay. context at all, and you just kind of take it, and you just get a little splash of uh, something. So, folks, in lieu of it. us reading out the entire Twitter feed of uh, NYT without con- or minus context, you can yeah. you too can follow it on Twitter for uh, for free. Yes. It's better about best part about Twitter is for free, uh, free service. So next week we're coming at you with our uh, NFL. I want to mention a cool Twitter account. 
preview. Go ahead. Please do, Alex. Okay. There's that. There's all over my, my, my clothes Twitter here. Account. Okay, go, Alex. Okay. Well, you're asking, hey, who wants to mention a cool Twitter <laughs> thing? All right. Shut up. It's over now. <laughs> you weren't uh, fast no, enough. No, at, at saved you a click, and it is it has 157,000 <laughs> followers, and it just yeah. retweets, yeah. like, say, uh, BuzzFeed or New York Observer and, and uh, saves you from clickbait, like, uh, from BuzzFeed and other things like that. So it's kind of an they interesting got, thing. They got into a bit of a tiff yesterday. Yes, or, they uh, did. They're last yeah, week. They're, last ah. week. <laughs> But he'll just come in and they'll be like, oh, Shonda Rhimes has booked a guest spot on a show this fall and it's probably not the ones you're expecting. And then he just goes, Mindy Project, so you don't have to click on it. <laughs> and like, why does this oh. do this? And he's like, because of this. So he's just saving everybody from, from clickbait on Twitter. I still hate those. Like, you t- eight things and number three will blow your mind. Yeah, and he'll uh, just say what it is. He'll be like, yeah, it's I, applesauce. I don't mean to open a can of worms again, but one thing I'll say about the ALS challenge that we mentioned Cans last week ass. is that there are too many examples of this is the only one you need to see. I, oh, God. I'm I, so I'd sick of the, the way headlines are written nowadays. Like even it's not horrible. ALS, but just like, oh, this happens and you won't believe the reaction of this. That's what this I'm saying. Yeah, this person know, yeah. won the internet. This she, she or like a dad who does something yeah, exactly. for his kid. It's just like, yeah, I get it. Best dads dad like ever. their kids. Like he dressed them up as <laughs> Buzz Lightyear. Um, well, our, give our a crap. Doesn't, but it's a joke, Dad. I mean, I don't click them, but just uh, you see the headline and you're like, get out of here. Yeah. That when we when we market our podcast, it'll be like three brothers, and you won't believe which one is the stupid one. <laughs> and then to I, save you a click, it'll say, that. "Oh, I, I resent that." Right. You represent that remark. Can I close the the? Can I wrap this whole shindig up? Can I do that? Yes. At saved you a click. Okay. At saved you a click. Also At check William out. Um, check out a book from from the library. It's free unless you have late fees. But but check one out. I say one specifically, but no, you just you know, <laughs> generic. Check out a book. They got a lot. It's a library. You'll be surprised. It's a building that still exists. Uh, next week, uh, we're going to break down, I guess, a little NFL preview. We're going to predict, boys, we're going to predict the Super Bowl. All right. And the winner okay. of the Super Bowl prediction gets a trip to the Super Bowl. Is it in, um, no, it's not in San Francisco, Santa Clara next year, is it? Because WrestleMania is. Where is it next year? Super Bowl. Huh? It's at, uh, it's in Arizona, University of Phoenix Stadium. It's 49, right? Uh, forty nine. Yeah, and and Super yeah, so Bowl 50's, fifty is going to be in at Santa Clara. Yeah, Santa Clara, whatever Super, you want to call it. So this one's Super in Phoenix, Bowl, and then Super 51's Bowl in Houston. L. And Super Bowl Lee is in Houston. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. No, they're they're actually going away from those. They're oh, not they are? doing. Uh, yeah, they're not doing uh, Roman numerals for that very purpose. Because otherwise, it'll be the Super Bowl. Yeah, <laughs> like Super Bowl L. They're, they're going back yeah. to Arabic they, numbers. Thanks, Rome. Didn't you know we yeah, used they're, that? They're going to Arabic. Yeah. And then Super Bowl cool. 100 would just be Super Bowl C. Anyway, uh, the Roman numeral uh, quiz come at you next week. Uh, thanks awesome. a lot for listening, folks. Uh, take care of uh, each other. Wash behind your ears. Uh, deodorant. Uh, it's important. Check it out. Uh, and um, deodorant. Always look on the bright side of life.